The traditional definition of noise is unwanted or disturbing sound. Sound becomes unwanted when it either interferes with normal activities such as sleeping, conversation, or disrupts or diminishes one's quality of life. An impact of noise on animal life is a reduction of usable habitat that noisy areas may cause, which in the case of endangered species may be part of a path to extinction. The fact that you can't see, taste, or smell it may help explain why it has not received as much attention as other types of pollution such as air pollution or water pollution. Evidence has shown that noise pollution takes a toll on our health and happiness. A study done near West London's Heathrow Airport um, has shown a negative effect on reading and standardized testing of students. Um, people who live near these noisy airports have also shown to have significantly higher levels of adrenaline and cortisol, which are two of our stress hormones. This then suppresses the immune system because it is part of our flight or f fight or flight response system where our immune system then um, shifts towards fulfilling short-term needs rather than long-term rather than our long-term health. Um, something people don't really know is that we never actually get used to the noise. Even when we think we have been accustomed to it, biological changes are still taking place inside of us. So the intensity of noise is measured in decibel units. Decibel scale is logarithmic. So each 10 decibel increase represents a tenfold increase in noise intensity. So for example, 20 decibels, I mean 30 decibels is 10 times more than 20 decibels and it is twice as loud. So 40 decibels is 100 times more intense than 20 decibels and 80 decibels is 1 million times more intense than 20 decibels and it's 64 times as loud. Um, about 45 decibels of noise, the average person cannot go to sleep and at 20, 120 decibels, the air register pain, but hearing damage occurs at about 85 decibels. Um, but apart from hearing loss, such noise can cause lack of sleep, irritability, heartburn, indigestion, ulcers, high blood pressure, and possibly heart disease. So in order to deal with this, these health problems, the United States came up with the Noise Control Act of 1972. and this also prevented, this engineered a lot of things to protect us from noise pollution and it, it reduced workplace noise. So of course we're going to talk about more about what's being done. Okay, we are here at Mountain View Football Stadium. It's a high, local high school here in Orem, Utah. And what has been done here is they built a big barrier around the whole football field that is just a bunch of grass and dirt that uh, extends about 15 feet above uh, ground level. It's about 15 feet high. Um, for a barrier to be effective, it's considered uh, better if it is thicker. Um, so thickness plays a part in how much or how well sound waves are absorbed and uh, blocked or refracted. Um, a good sound barrier is supposed to be above the the sign of or the line of sight. So um, if it's above your head, then it's a good sound barrier. And as you can, as we've seen, uh, it's about 15 feet high or so here. Um, some other things that are done are speed limits are put into place in city areas where um, so it can keep quieter for the neighborhoods and also even the types of roads um, they're putting different textures in to make the hum of the tire less um, distracting so I'm just going to show you the top of the hill and um, so you can see kind of how high it is and the neighborhood that's right on the other side so there's just houses right here um, so that the sound cannot, it doesn't affect or bother them. And you can see down there how high it extends, so that's it. <laughs>